Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here for Pop Turnative. Speaking to Vancouver Canucks forward Zach McHugh and Zach, welcome to Pop Turnative. Ah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's good to see you. This interview is at least maybe three or four years in the making. Like we've been trying to do this for a while. Yeah, no, it is. It's been going on for a while. You know, finally, finally getting her done. Um, it's been it's been crazy. It's been a crazy, you know, two seasons for yourself and the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, you know, you kind of had this idea that after February, you know, um, like March 2020 it was going to be crazy and everything. Overall, you know. How was it that first couple of months just adapting to everything and not being able to kind of do the usual routines? Uh, yeah, you know, it was definitely a little bit odd. Uh, you know, I think everybody was in, in the same boat, though. So, you know, everybody kind of just kind of had to take it one step at a time and, and try to, you know, do their best to be adaptable and then, you know, take everything that, that's coming your way. So, you know, I think uh, with a little bit of time, everybody kind of adjusted and, and you know, got used to things. Absolutely. Um, for you specifically, I mean, you're a National Hockey League player. You were undrafted. You were not drafted to the National Hockey League. Um, it was a dream for yourself. You know, you play in the Quebec Mayor Junior Hockey League and everything. Um, when did it officially hit you that, you know, you were on the path of potentially playing pro hockey, Zach? Was it like your last couple of years in the Quebec Mayor Junior Hockey League? Uh, it probably wasn't, honestly, until you know, my 20 year old years uh, when I was playing in Gatineau, uh, you know, is, you know, obviously being undrafted and, and, you know, never really, uh, you know, never really having any looks until that 20 year old year, but, um, you know, getting a few offers that year, uh, when I was in Gatineau and then, you know, it kind of set in that, okay, like, yeah, you know what, like, I think, you know, I, I have an opportunity to go play pro and, um, you know, it was exciting. It was exciting stuff. Absolutely. You know, this year you're playing in the North Division, obviously just playing the Canadian teams. Every, you know, week it was like a new playoff series, it felt like, because you were playing the same teams over and over again. How was that adapting to that landscape that it might not even ever happen again? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. You know, it's uh, it's odd. You're not, you know, you're not really used to that, you know, even from years before, but... Like you said, yeah, it's like it's like playing a mini playoff series every time, uh, you know, every time you meet a team. So, you know, teams know you well, you know, there's, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot that teams can see and, you know, make adjustments on very easily whenever you're playing each other so many times and so close together. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, a little uh, odd that way. But, uh, you know, I think we, you know, I think everybody kind of figured that out. For all your career in junior and as well in the National Hockey League, you know, when people look at Zach McEwen, you kind of have this ability to present a lot of different roles and you have the ability to do a lot of different things. You know, in, in the in junior, we saw the leadership aspect of your game. We saw the ability to score goals and create offense. Playing with the Vancouver Canucks, we saw more of that kind of role player, that sandpaper player, not being afraid to kind of use the body, protect uh, protect his teammates, so to speak. Um, is it safe to say that was something you were going to hope for as well, that you're going to be able to show kind of many aspects of your game, depending on what, you know, the coaches or your team wants from you? Yeah, no, for sure. You know, I like to, you know, try to be as, you know, as, uh, you know, adaptable as possible. And, you know, put in any situation, hopefully, you know, can, you know, can try to, you know, adapt my game to that. But, you know, the physical side of my game has always been something that's that's kind of been there. And, you know, it's, you know, it's something that's not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, it just, uh, you know, adds a different asset, uh, you know, to my game that, that, you know, can only help me. So when you signed with Vancouver and when you were speaking with your agents and the teams, was that something they were hoping for? Like the sandpaper role, like in Utica, then moving to the, like, was that kind of the discussion? Yeah, no, for sure. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to be offensive and you want to, you know, you want to play with skill and you want to chip in offensively whenever possible. But you know, that, you know, the, you know, the physical side of my game is something that was, was going to be a thing that would help me kind of get to the next level, I think. And that's something that, you know, I realized and I, I learned how to use that in Utica and, uh, you know, take my game to another level from there once I figured out, figured out how to put that all together. So, um, yeah. It's pretty crazy how, you know, it's interesting too, because you, you've seen it, you know, 
stepping away from the NHL a little bit, going back to major junior hockey. I mean, you saw it from both ends. You know, you played for the Gatineau Olympic, but you also played. Like, I remember when you were on the Moncton Wildcats, those that really big playoff series and everything. Um, it's pretty crazy how junior hockey can single-handedly, atmosphere-wise, prepare you for the National Hockey League. Like, it, have you ever thought about that? Like, some of those, some of the series, I was talking to Connor Garland and Steven Johnson about this. Like, that series against Gatineau, the Moncton series, like, a couple of years, that was insane. That was crazy. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's it's a great league to play in. It's, you know, the CHL, you know, does it right. And, you know, there are a lot of teams, um, you know, a lot of teams in that league are comparable to NHL teams, you know, with fan bases in their in their respective towns. And, you know, they got great fans. And, and you know, it really does. It, it prepares you to play like on a bigger stage because, you know, some of the games you're playing there are, are huge games. And like, you know, you go to Quebec. Quebec city and they're, you know, they got 10, 12,000 fans in there. And, you know, it's, that was kind of my first taste of it too. And I was, you know, I, it, it's crazy. The wild, that Wildcats uh, team you had, you had, you guys had a, a great group of guys that are Connor Garland, Cam Askew, Will Bauer. That was, that was a good group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still keep in touch with all your junior guys in the Olympic and also the Wildcats here and there. Yeah, a little bit, you know, you know, so you run into some guys that you played with or played against, you know, throughout your junior career, you know, some guys that moved on to pro as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit. Moving a little bit off the ice as well, you recently started a foundation for your father. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no. So it's, uh, you know, it's called uh, My Biggest Fan Foundation. Uh, you know, it's uh, the goal is to, you know, give uh, uh, kind of underprivileged ch uh, children a chance to, to play hockey and, you know, get their start. If it's, you know, something that's uh, it's a family issue for them, you know, it's uh it's to, you know, provide gear, provide scholarships, you know, just give kids that might not have the same chance as everybody else, just give them that chance to see what they can do and, you know, get their start in hockey. That's amazing. Um, when, uh, any updates about that? Have you guys been doing any, like, are there any events coming up now that things are opening up? Are you going to do any, like, golf charity events? Anything happening in that regard? Yeah, so July 31st, we have the first annual Craig McEwen Classic. Uh, it's a golf tournament held at uh, Belvedere uh, Golf and Country Club in, in here in PEI. So, um, you know, we're lucky enough to have a really good group uh, of people in my family that have been working on this. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's been a lot, it's been a tireless effort from a lot of people to make this happen. So to have the event coming up here at the end of the month is, it's going to be really exciting. And, um, you know, it's going to be something that's, it's going to give my family, you know, a lot of pride and, um, you know, happiness for years to come too, and something to work on. So, um, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great. Absolutely. Are you born and raised in PE, Isaac? I am. So how is that from your perspective? I mean, you know, small population wise, you know, hockey development, not as big as other kind of areas. How's that kind of growing up in, you know, a smaller city with that kind of, goal in mind like that big goal of the nhl that's an interesting dynamic as well yeah it's it's very <laughs> interesting here in pei because you know you grow up like you said a smaller population there's a lot less teams a lot less kids you know playing minor hockey but you know the hockey was always good here yep. um you know the minor hockey they have really good minor hockey programs here in pei it's, um you know it's it and yeah like you said going you know coming from pei um you don't see a whole lot of people, you know, moving on and, and playing pro and, and playing in the NHL. So, you know, I find it uh, a little bit extra special, you know, that I get to share that with where I'm from and my, you know, my friends and family that I've grown up with. And, you know, I have the greatest, you know, support crew around me. So, um, you know, to be able to share that with them and then, you know, come back here every summer, it, you know, it's a beautiful Prince Edward Island. It's, you know, it's a paradise here. So, uh, I feel very lucky for that. Absolutely. You know, last year you were in, there was the bubble, and this year wasn't a bubble, but you were playing the same teams and you were teammates all the time. Um, was it safe to say there was a lot of card playing going on and a lot of video games? Like, you, you guys <laughs> spent a lot of time together in, like, hotel rooms and stuff. Yeah. Like, was that safe to say that's what it was? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty safe. <laughs> that's a pretty safe bet. It's, it's mostly... <laughs> You get card games, you, you play some Call of Duty, you play, you know, you play Xbox, you need the Xbox in the room with your, you know, you're going to be, you're going to have a lot of uh, spare time. So, um, you know, it was a good way to, you know, it's a good way to kill some time and, you know, stay also, you know, can stay connected with your buddies back home and stuff like that too. So, 
Uh, but yeah, it's pretty accurate. And I'm sure there's a lot of watching going on. What did you like? What did you watch on Netflix? Amazon? Did you watch anything? Any shows? Did you catch up on a yeah, lot of shows the last couple of years? I mean, a few of the boys rewatched. I watched Game of Thrones for the third time, but <laughs> a couple of the guys that haven't seen it before, so watched that from start to finish. <laughs> we in the oh bubble my and, god! You know, that was kind of like a meetup kind of watch an episode or two and then call it a night so i've been doing uh, that too i've been going back i've been going back and watching the simpsons and it's taking a long time because there's so many seasons yeah you got got like 25 years to get through there (laughs) pretty much um what is your favorite thing specifically about being a professional hockey player is it literally the fact that you get to play the game for a living is there more than yeah, that? You get is to that... do what I love yeah. every single day. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, you get on the ice, you're around people, you know, you like hanging out with. It's, you know, it's, I never take a day for granted playing in the NHL. You know, it's, it's a dream come true. And, you know, I had to try to have as much fun as I can every day. It's interesting too, because, you know, with social media, it's all speculations. You know, there's, you know, playoffs, reseedings, there's a lot. Um, like the schedules, the NHL, the expansion draft, and there's all this thing kind of happening. Have you found coping mechanisms to just kind of just block that stuff up and just literally just go with the flow and not care about all the other chatter? Like, I know it's hard, but like, you gotta, I have, but you gotta my, block my it out. My girlfriend hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I have, but yeah, she has a tougher time dealing with that uncertainty kind of thing. <laughs> And I do, but you know, you kind of have to be adaptable and just, you know, go with the flow. <laughs> do you come back and, from the yeah. gym and she's like, "Did you hear about what they said about you?" Is that? Like- <laughs> oh no, it's just like you know, it's you know, there's always you know, everything's up in the air. Sometimes it's always you know, you want to do your best to solidify your, yourself in a place and you know, work hard to you know to to try to gain some of that uh, you know structure where you you know you're going to be in a place for a while. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, you have to be adaptable and, you know, you got to be ready for whatever comes your way. Um, it, it is, it, it, especially these last couple of seasons, it is pretty unpredictable in terms of what to expect. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's um, for sure. I feel like it's different for different players. Different players have their own coping mechanisms. I mean, the Vancouver Canucks didn't make the playoffs, but did you kind of keep up the date a little bit with what was going around in the league or did you kind of just, you know, take the... The, the the time off and just focus on going back to the gym like what was your off season like this year oh uh, yeah definitely like you know you got to take a little bit of time off reset let the body kind of recover and you know let the you know clear the head a little bit and uh but yeah no it's pretty much similar you know to what i usually do at the end of every season it's, you know a couple weeks off and you know get back into the gym get training again and you know kind of just start gearing up for uh you know, get start gearing up for the next year, especially whenever you know you know you don't have uh, a season that you're as quite happy with as you as you should. You yeah. know, you want to you know you want to hit that reset button and you know get ready to uh, to move on to uh, you know be better next year. So what does what does Zach McEwen specifically have to do next year to bounce back and get better, like you said? Oh well, I mean, you know, there's a whole lot. You know, you can always get better in in a whole bunch of areas, but. You know, I'm spending a lot of time working on speed, you know, getting stronger, faster, you know, just, you know, the every summer is, you know, it's the time when you can really use it to, um, you know, to improve yourself and improve your game. And, you know, that's what I plan on doing this summer and coming back, uh, you know, coming back in full force next year. Do you see yourself, though, as like that player who's going to always have to kind of maybe not fight every time, not necessarily a fight, but more like kind of get in there to def- like because there there are a lot of young players and up-and-coming players and great players in the Vancouver Canucks and I think one of the roles that they designated you with was kind of protecting a lot of those players and kind of being like a team player do you do you see that as continuing on overall because you have gotten a lot of um applause from a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans for being that guy who goes in and 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 you know take care takes care of his teammates and defends his teammates Oh yeah. And, you know, that's not, you know, that's not going anywhere with me. That's something, you know, that I've, you know, I, I always kind of took pride in and, you know, I, it's just, you know, it's kind of just a level of, you know, you're out there with your teammates and, you know, it's, you're, you know, if something happens to one of my teammates, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is. And it's just, you know, it's part of the, part of my game and, you know, it's, it's going to be part of my game. And I don't, you know, I don't see that going anywhere for sure. And very quickly before we wrap up, and I'm hope, hoping we don't get a usual suspect answer, but you might. But, like, who is the hardest player you have ever played against? I'm not talking best. I'm talking the hardest player you've ever played against in National Hockey League. Oh, man. Hardest to play against? Yeah. 
Jeez, that's it's a thinker. You know, I mean, it's not the best. There's, so there's many, a difference, well, there's though, so right? Many good players, and yeah. like you know, the skill is just is ridiculous. You know, in the NHL, and there's so many good players, and and you know, guys that are hard to stop offensively. Yeah, and, you know, guys like obviously like Connor McDavid. Like you know, we saw him a lot this year. You know, <laughs> like you know, he can take over a game. You know, if he wants to, but it's uh, you know, it's it, it's tough to say because you know it's. Like I said, there's just there's so much skill in, in the league, and so many you know so many good players that you know every, everybody's hard to play against. Is it a know? bit it's, is it a bit mind blowing and a bit irritating at times how like the game is, is just continues to get faster and stronger like every year? Like there, it just seems to like it's on this kind of uprise. I find of like all like be it's just the hardest game in the world to play, and it's the hardest league in the world to play. And it just kept keeps getting harder. I feel like. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it definitely, it's getting a lot faster. So if you can't, you know, if you can't keep up, you know, there's, they're going to replace you with somebody that can. So, you know, you got to, you need to do what you can to, you know, stay there, stay in the mix and, uh, you know, do take what everybody else is doing and keep getting better and stronger and faster too. Absolutely. Zach, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. It was great to chat with you, man. No problem, man. It was a good time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, there's a like people could keep up date with you. You're mostly on Instagram, right? That's where they can yep. kind of see yep. what's your handle on there. Uh, it's McEwen66. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Zach McEwen for the Vancouver Canucks of the National Hockey League and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.